this is 60 goblins and one brush and this is a new Warhammer Age of Sigma video, this time about Denarion. If you want to know who is Techless, you have to understand who is Denarion. Actually, you have to know four characters. Firstly, Denarion, second, Kador, third, Morathi, and fourth, Malekith. Later, of course, Tyrion as well. But we'll start with Denarion, the Phoenix King the mightiest warrior of ancient Elvendom and he was basically together with Kelador responsible for defeating the chaos. At that time there was the first chaos incursion that was threatening to destroy everything. Before much long time before the end times and they almost didn't win. The situation was hopeless and although Anarion had almost godlike powers, they could only stop the chaos from coming through some magical tricks. So now I will read to you some parts of the book Blood of Anarion. It's very well written. It's by William King. William King is also the guy who wrote the Gotrek and Felix novels, which is a must read. If you like to read and if you like Warhammer, read the Gotrek and Felix novels. I'll make a video about that later as well. But for now, they republished all kinds of old Warhammer stuff. And there are three books. The first is The Blood of Venarion. And then there are two more books in this omnibus. It's well worth reading and William King is one of the best authors that um, you can read in the Warhammer universes. 79th year of the reign of Venarion, the cliffs of Skaldarok, Ulthuan. From high atop the cliffs of Skaldarok, Anarion looked down on the camp of his enemies. The chaos worshippers fires placed in the darkness more numerous than the stars. There were hundreds of thousands of his monstrous foes down there, and, even if he killed every last one of them, more would come. He was going to die. The whole world was going to die. There was nothing anyone could do to stop it. He had tried, with all his enormous strength, with all his deadly cunning, with power, greater than any mortal had ever possessed, wielding a weapon so evil it was forbidden by the gods. And, still, he had failed to stop the forces of chaos. Their armies had surged across Ulthuan, crushing the last resistance of the elves. Howling hordes of blood-mad beastmen smashed through the final defences. Armies of mutants overwhelmed the last guardians of the island continent, Legions of daemons reveled in the ruins of ancient cities. After decades of warfare, chaos was mightier than ever, and his people were at the end of their strength. Victory was impossible. He had been mad to think it could be otherwise. He cast his gaze back to his own camp. Once he would have been deemed his own army mighty. Hundreds of dragons slumbered amid the silk pavilions spread out across the mountain top. Tens of thousands of heavily armored elf warriors awaited his command. They would throw themselves into the attack once more, if he gave the order. Even though they were outnumbered, more than twenty to one. With him to lead them, there might even be victory. They might even win. But it would be a fruitless victory. The Chaos army at the foot of the cliffs was only one of many. There were other armies, equally great, and many greater, scattered across Ulthuan and, for all he knew, the rest of the world. They could not all be beaten by the forces at his disposal. He turned and strode back inside his pavilion. It was futile to contemplate the size of the enemy force. 
He unsheathed the sword of Cain. It glowed in infernal black, casting out hungry shadows that dimmed the hanging lanterns within the great silk tent. Red runes burned along the blade, forged from alien metal. The sword whispered obscenely to him in a thousand voices, and every voice, whether commanding, entreating, or seductive, demanded death. It was the most powerful weapon ever forged, and still it was not enough. It was heavy in his hand, with the full weight of his failure. For all the good it had done him, he might as well have kept using something the blade Calador had made for him when they were still friends. The sword was killing him by inches, bleeding away his life a droplet at a time. Every hour aged him like a day would age another elf. Only the unnatural vitality had acquired when he passed through the flame of a Syrian had enabled him to survive this long, and even that would not last forever.